That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. So I gave a little tease there to the Daily Dose of Stupid, and it has to do with Michael Bloomberg, who, if you live outside of the Super Tuesday states, which of course we don't, Alabama is a Super Tuesday state, along with like Arkansas, Oklahoma, Texas, California, there, there's several of us. If you live outside of a Super Tuesday state, you probably have heard very little about Michael Bloomberg. But if you live in a Super Tuesday state, Boy, you have seen nothing but Michael Bloomberg ads on the internet, on television, on radio. There, there's several running on News Radio 1440 right now, this second, which, by the way, I'm fine with. May not agree with the guy much, but I don't mind my company taking his money. And it's smart for him because otherwise, the only people talking about him on News Radio 1440 are people like me and Levin and Kevin. So, hey, if, if he wants to buy some ad time, by all means, more power to him. But. Bloomberg does have an issue because a clip from 2016 resurfaced, and this is not long after some seemingly racist, now I don't think they were racist based on the context of what he was talking about, and uh, it was a poorly worded comment, but it certainly was not one that I think necessitates that the guy is a racist, but that came out last week, and then we have this new clip from 2016, which has resurfaced. And this is really the disadvantage of being a veteran politician in today's climate is that because of the internet and because things are so easy to archive and then go back through and search, it is just super, super easy to find somebody making a gaffe or saying something that is unflattering to a certain group of people or saying things that sound stupid. And because of how quickly the, the woke movement moves now, that is even easier to do because what is offensive changes every single day. So uh, because of that, especially somebody running on the Democrat side, they have it pretty tough because their words can come back to haunt them and can come back to haunt them in a very big way. This particular clip, when it resurfaced, the Bloomberg camp said, okay, well, that was taken out of context, and he didn't really mean it that way, so what we've done is we've added the context back to give you the context of what he was talking about with, with modern farming versus non-modern farming, but nonetheless, I think that, frankly, just my opinion, adding the context doesn't do a whole lot to save face with this because of the nature of what he was saying, but I'll let you be the judge. This is a clip of Michael Bloomberg from 2016. Think about it. The, agri the agrarian society lasted 3,000 years, and we could teach processes. I could teach anybody, even people in this room, so no offense intended, to, to be a farmer. You, it's a process. You dig a hole, you put a seed in, you put dirt on top, add water, up comes the corn. The information economy is fundamentally different. You have to have a different skill set. You have to have a lot more gray matter. So as you can see there, we tried to provide the full context for it, because I do think it's fair that people need to be taken in context. But at the same time, even if you take it, you know, just on his word that what he was talking about was not farmers in general, but specifically modern farming, that still doesn't help him much. And the reason that I say that is because let's say that he's 100% accurate in that. We are still degrading generations of farmers that came before modern farming. You're still degrading the people that literally built this country. And if you're talking to voters that maybe are a generation or two removed from the farm, or even three or four generations removed from the farm, you're still talking about their grandparents or their great-grandparents or their great-great-grandparents. Granted, that gets a little bit softer a blow the further away you get from it, but the point is, virtually every American has ties back to agriculture if you go back far enough. And a lot of them still have that tie to agriculture pretty closely. And that's especially true, and this is why I find this such a, a major gaffe for him, that's especially true in the states that Bloomberg right now is trying really hard to win. Because you could get away with saying that in certain states, but in California and Arkansas and Kentucky and Texas and Virginia, and by the way, California as well, because, yes, California, we think of L.A. and Hollywood and all that. California's a huge ag state. They've got massively successful dairies, vineyards. There's all kinds of crops that are grown in California because it has such a, a varied climate. And so if you're running as a primary candidate in the Democrat, you're going to lose a lot of Dixiecrats. You're going to lose a lot of people 
that our Democrats, despite, you know, not agreeing socially with a lot of the Democrats' policies, but, you know, their, their daddy was a Democrat and their granddaddy was a Democrat. And here's the other thing. If that's the type of person, if that is the type of person that continues to vote Democrat, despite the fact that everybody around them has changed and despite the fact that they don't really live in a blue state anymore, do you really think those are the kind of people that are going to take it lightly that Bloomberg is degrading the lifestyle of their parents or grandparents or great grandparents? I have a feeling the family ties run pretty deep in a person like that. And for Bloomberg trying to get their vote on a stage with, you know, 10 other Democrats now, we've rolled it down to what, eight, 10 contenders at this point. That's going to be hard to recover from in some of the Super Tuesday states, the, the very states that he has been running. Uh, as a, a part of it. Now, I got to tell you, if I'm somebody, and I don't believe this, but if I'm somebody like Lunch Bucket Joe that's always been seen as the voice of the working man and he's trying to, to make this message of Bloomberg shouldn't be just buying all these ads and buying his way into the presidency and he's only doing this because he's a billionaire, I run that ad nonstop in all of the southern states. I mean, if I'm Joe Biden and I'm hanging on for dear life, that's the first thing I do. I run those ads in Kentucky and Virginia and Arkansas and Texas. If you're Pete Buttigieg, now granted, Buttigieg doesn't have a whole lot of chance in the southern states anyway because he has a problem with black voters and those people are less likely to vote for a gay guy. But if I were Buttigieg, I would do exactly the same thing, especially somebody from a Midwestern state, a breadbasket state like Indiana. I'm not saying that this is like the last nail in the coffin for Bloomberg or that he's going to dry up and go away, but let's not kid ourselves. This is a major gaffe. And when it comes to the whole farming versus the jobs and the information economy, look here, I've done both. I was an ag major at Auburn. I grew up as the son of an ag teacher. My grandfather was a farmer. My great-grandparents were farmers, and if he were able to physically, he would still be farming. He just quit farming a few years ago because he just physically couldn't do it anymore. I've worked on farms. Heck, I've worked with Amish farms. I've been around agriculture my entire life. Done it myself, done it with other people, worked for other farmers. And I've done this too. I mean, this is about as an information-age job as you can have. I run an internet talk show. My job literally wouldn't even exist without the internet. I do the radio side of it too, and I get that that's been around for a long time. But the internet side of it, this is a very information-based job. And even with the radio side, it's a very information-based job because I'm literally a person that gives people information. I've done both. Believe me, the farm work is much, much harder, and it takes far more skill. So even taking the politics of how much it'll hurt him aside, just taking his, uh, his argument in a vacuum and what he's saying, it's absolutely untrue. That is a far harder job to do, and I'm not just talking about because it's physically exhausting, which of course it is. The range of skills that a farmer has to have, because he has to be such a jack-of-all-trades, it's not even funny. He's got to be an amateur meteorologist. He's got to be an amateur mechanic, an amateur veterinarian if he has animals, an amateur biologist if he has plants. Well, biology would fall into both, but a uh, plant specialist. Uh, you have to be an agronomist. You have to know your soil and know what's working, what's, what's not working. I mean, there's so many moving parts to running any kind of agricultural, uh, any kind of agricultural enterprise. It's an incredibly difficult job, and you have to be very sharp to be able to be successful at it. And by the way, American farmers are very successful at it. And this is where this elitist bullcrap from a New York billionaire comes in. And this is the reason that watching that, you perceive it that way. The innovation and intellect of American farmers are the reason we have an information economy. Yes, nowadays, very few of our people a little less than 2% of people are directly involved in production agriculture. Why? Because American farmers were so innovative and so good at their jobs and so smart and so skilled that very few of them had to farm anymore. They literally created the information economy and an environment in which it could exist because they were producing so much food that most people didn't have to work directly for their food like they did at one time. 
You see, that's the irony in all of this. He's degrading the very people and saying that, oh, their job's easy, anybody could do it. Yeah, well, not everybody could do it. And because so few people could do it, we had to innovate and get better at it. And when we did, that created the economy that he's talking about. A place like New York City simply could not survive if American farmers were not incredibly good and incredibly skilled at their job. And you could say, oh, well, I was talking about there's a difference in modern farming and past farmers. Okay, well, New York City in the way that it exists right now would not be able to have existed if it were not for former farmers before modern farming that created the innovations to create modern farming. And so this is just a massive foot-in-mouth moment for Michael Bloomberg. He has no idea what he's talking about, and he puts that on glaring display for everybody to see. Anybody that knows anything about agriculture or the agricultural innovations that have happened over the past 200 years can very easily see why that is an incredibly ignorant statement to make. And anybody that actually has done farming realizes how much more complicated it is than that, whether you're talking about modern farming or farming in the past. Oh, you just put the seed in the ground and the corn comes up. Uh, no, it doesn't. There's an awful lot involved in the middle there. Because believe me, if you go out there on, on plowing day and, and plow the field and just stick the corn in the dirt and leave it, it ain't going to be up by the time harvest comes. There's 10,000 different things that can go wrong between now and then. Between the, the planting time and the harvest time. And guarantee if it can go wrong, it will go wrong. Now granted, corn's a little hardier than most crops, but even it, like you have to take care of it in all that time in between. And it's not just random manual labor. There's a lot of skill involved. And the irony in all of this is Bloomberg is making a statement about a profession with which he has no knowledge. And the reason that he has no knowledge and no firsthand experience is because the farmers have been so innovative as they, they've created a world where a person doesn't have to have any direct influence by agriculture. So it is ironic that the reason that he doesn't have that information, that he doesn't have that first-hand experience or even second-hand experience with agriculture, the reason that he is able to be so ignorant of it is because of the innovation of farmers that created a society where food was so abundant and so easy to receive and so cheap that we could have jobs and, and whole industries that have nothing to do with production agriculture. That's the thing that's so funny in all of this, is it is the farmers that were so darn good at their job that are the reason that elites like Bloomberg that have lived in a city their whole life don't know anything about it. It is a testament to the hard work and innovation and the skill of the American farmer, whether Bloomberg wants to believe it or not. <laughs> So now they have this fancy new technology where you click on one of these boxes and it takes you to another one of my videos. Hopefully it works a lot better than the Obamacare website or the DNC's Iowa caucus app. Gotta love that big government central planning.